Okay, we have another example we're going to solve by a quadratic equation by graphing. And so as you saw on the previous slide, there were three options for you when solving a quadratic. We either had the quadratic ha hit the x-axis once, twice, or not at all. So we can see that it's kind of hard to see, but here it only hits it once. Here is two places, and here is no places because it never even hits that um, x-axis. So now I'm going to tell you from the start that this one's going to hit it just once. So you're not going to know for any other ones you do in your homework whether it's going to be one, two, or no solutions. But um, this one only has one, and we'll see what that looks like when we solve it. So first off, we have to write this in standard form because we cannot solve this until it's written in standard form. So that means we want a quadratic equal to zero. So in order to get this saying equal to zero, that means we need all terms on one side. I suggest you do it on the side that will make a positive, because that's just always nicer for us. So we are going to take everything to the right side. So if I add x squared to both sides and subtract 14, so I'm going to do this in one step. That will give you a total of 0 on the left side because 14 minus 14 is 0. X, negative x squared plus x squared is 0. Equal to, there's no like terms for x squared, so x squared minus 6x. And then 23 minus 14 is 9. So we have plus 9. So we can solve it this way too. It's okay the 0 is over here because by the symmetric property of equality, you can just rewrite it and bring it to the other side anyway. So if you would rather have it on the other side, go for it. But again, I suggest that you make a positive because that's always easier to graph. So now we just need to graph the function f of x equal to x squared plus 6x. Just kidding. It is minus 6x plus 9. So again, since we have it in standard form, that means we're solving for the x-intercepts or the roots of this quadratic equation. So we can just graph that and then go from there. So let's find the vertex first. We know that that is when, um, to find the x value is x equals negative b over 2a, b equals negative 6, and a equals 1. So plug that in, you get x equal to negative of a negative 6 over 2 times 1. So that's positive 6 over 2, which is a positive 3. So x equals 3 is the x value of our vertex, and it's also the axis of symmetry. So we'll be, we will be sure to um, graph that also to help us with those twin points. Now let's plug that into our equation to figure out what the y value of the vertex is. So we'll have 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 9. So that equals 9 um, minus 18 plus 9. 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Plus 9 is equal to 0. So our vertex is actually an x-intercept. So our vertex, again, make sure you're writing down that this is the vertex, is 3, 0. So let's go ahead and graph the axis of symmetry and our vertex here. The axis of symmetry is at x equals 3. And then our vertex is at 3, 0. So right here. So we still need to find um, some other points. So since our vertex is at 3, we want to go 2 above, 2 below. But again, we only need to do one way because we know we're going to have twin points occur. So in our table, we know that 3 is the output of 0. We want to find 2 and 1, and therefore find 4 and 5. So let's just do f of 1 first because that's a little easier. It's 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 9. That's 1 minus 6 plus 9, so that's negative 5 plus 9, which is 4. So f of 1 is 4, so that means also f of 5 is 4. And let's find one more, f of 2, so 
So 2 squared minus 6 times 2 plus 9 is equal to 4 minus 12 plus 9. 4 minus 12 is negative 8, and negative 8 plus 9 is 1. So f of 2 equals 1. So, so does f of 4. And so it was uh, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So we're going, going to finish graphing those here. Okay. So it was 4, 1, and 2, 1. And then 5, 4, and 1, 4. And there's our quadratic, and we can see that it only crosses the x-axis once. So this one only has one answer. And that answer is um, 3. So x is equal to 3 is your final answer. And we found that by graphing. And before I go on to the next one, just think about what does this quadratic look like? What kind of quadratic is this? and it only has one answer. That'll be very important to notice for later.